Hello folks, in this video we're going to do a simulation of a parallel RLC circuit. So let's bring our circuit in here. And we can see we have a voltage source, 1 kilohertz 10 volt peak sine wave, a 1K resistor, 100 millihenry coil, and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And I've inserted uh, ammeters in line so I can get the individual branch currents as well as the source current. So the first thing to do here would be to grab values for the reactances and impedances. Okay, so X of L is just J2 pi FL. So plug your values in there, 1 kilohertz, 100 millihenries. We get a J628 for that. For X sub C, same deal, minus J1 over 2 pi FC. 1 kilohertz, 100 nanofarads, we get a negative J1592. And then finally, we'll just use the admittance approach, in other words, 1 over the sum of the uh, individual conductances and uh, susceptances to get the total Z, right? 1 over 1K plus 1 over J628 plus 1 over negative J1592. And we get a combined impedance of 720 ohms at an angle of 44 degrees. So this is, in fact, inductive which we would expect given the fact that X sub L is smaller, considerably smaller than X sub C. So it dominates, right? We're parallel, so the small values, the small ohmic values dominate. Now, given these values, we can determine what the currents are. So I'm just using a straight Ohm's law calculation right across the board here. So the source current should be the 10 volt source divided by the total impedance, the 720 at 44, this guy over here. And that works out to approximately 13.9 mils at an angle of negative 44 degrees, right? We'd expect that uh, angle to be the negative of the impedance angle, right? Since it's E over Z. And we can do the same thing for the three branch currents, because remember the key thing in a a uh, parallel network is voltage is consistent everywhere, right? We get the same voltage across every component. So everybody sees 10 volts. Take your 10 at an angle of zero, divide by 1K, resistive. We get 10 milliamps at an angle of zero. Do the same thing for the inductor. We get just shy of 16 mils at minus 90, right? So the current is lagging. Remember, the current can't change instantaneously in inductor. So we expect that current to lag. And then the opposite case with the capacitor. We divide this out, we get 6.28 mils at plus 90, right? Voltage across the cap can't change instantaneously, so the current leads, all right? All right, so that's our paper calculation. If we add these three things up, it should equal this, right? KCL. Granted, the magnitudes won't add. I mean, if you look at this, you can see, you know, you're going to get over 30 uh, mills if you just did a naive addition of these, but that's not really what's happening. These two right here, IL and IC, are 180 degrees in opposition, so they essentially subtract it, uh, from each other. Um, but again, even though it looks like naively you should be getting 30 mils, you're really getting uh, this value here, just a little less than 14 mils, 13.9. Okay, so we'll do a phaser diagram in just a sec, but um, we'll come up and grab uh, an AC analysis over here. See what we got. Okay, so right off the bat, IS is showing up at 13.88 at negative 43.93. So, you know, I rounded this value off. That's perfect. Uh, 10 mils at zero, exact right on the money for IR. 15.92 uh, at minus 90. Again, right on the money for IL, and then 6.28 at 90 um, mils for IC. So all of this working out just great. All right, phaser. So you might have noticed that I'm using the student version of uh, TINA version 12 here. I'm not using TINA TI because this version will do phaser diagrams for us. So here is the phaser, which I've done just a moment ago. And coming across here, right, here's our IR value, 10 at an angle of 0, 10 mils. 
And then we have um, IL, nearly 16 mils at minus 90. So here we are coming down. That's this guy at the minus 90. And then I see 6.28 at plus 90. So we can see on a phaser that these are in perfect opposition. Now, if we take this, this blue over here, I see, and we add it to IL, we can see that this is going to subtract off from this. They're going in opposite directions. So if you just lifted this up and put it, you know, tail to head over here, um, what would end up happening is you'd wind up right up around here somewhere, right? You took the 6.28 from here. There's going to be a little over here. So we would take that sum with this IR, and what we get is this uh, fuchsia, which is IS, right? Our 13.88 rounded off 13.9. Perfect. Everything lines up exactly as expected. So there's our KCL, right? When we obey the uh, angles associated, KCL works out perfectly. Beautiful. Now, practical point. You go into lab, get out your oscilloscope, and you try to do this. You have a little bit of a problem. And the problem is scope probes, scopes in general, right, are designed to measure voltages, not currents. This works out really well in the simulator, but how do you do this with uh, uh, the lab, right? You got your, your trusty scope. Well, the simple trick that we use is to uh, put a small sensing resistor in series with each of these components. And by small, we mean a value that's maybe a couple orders of magnitude or less compared to these ohmic values. Okay, so I'll give you an example. All right, so here is that same circuit. I've ripped out the ammeters, and I've simply thrown in sensing resistors. So this is the way that you would do this in the lab. You'd put a small resistor. I've thrown in one ohm resistors, okay? And you would put your probes at these points, right? These are your, basically your scope probes, okay? So what's going to happen, we know the res the, for a resistor, the voltage and the current must be in phase. So whatever I get for a voltage across this thing essentially echoes the current. I've chosen one ohm, which in this particular case works out really well given the sizes of these components. So all of these things are going to be, you know, uh, less than 1% of the associated value. So the, the impact on that is minimized. So when I read a voltage here, you know, if I read uh, 13 millivolts, that's telling me because, you know, think of, of uh, Ohm's law, right, V is equal to I times R, um, because R is 1 ohm, the voltage is the same number numerically as the current. So if this is 13 millivolts, then it's 13 milliamps. And whatever we see for uh, the, the relative phase on those voltages, that's the relative phase for the associated currents. So the actual sizes of these resistors, you know, 1 ohm works out really conveniently. Um, but if you had much, much smaller values here, you know, if this was uh, 52 ohms or something, you'd have to choose something a little bit smaller. On the other hand, if it was bigger, you know, if we were looking at, uh, you know, 100K or something, we could afford to use larger resistors here. You don't want to get too, too small because then the, the voltage that you're going to measure out here is going to be so small, it might get buried in noise. So there is a little balancing here. But essentially, that's a, a practical way of, of seeing this in lab. Right now, if you wanted to also measure um, what you have for your source, right, you can just stick a probe out here, and you can see what your voltages um, uh, angles are, these sensing voltage angles are, relative to your source. Of course, the signal is going to be a lot bigger. You'd have to scale it down. But you can, in fact, see what the relative uh, phase shifts are. Okay? Beautiful.